Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn and in this lecture I'm going to talk to you about how to manage nitrogen fertility in soils. So how to manage nitrogen fertility for crops. Alright, so this is part two of the soil nitrogen uh, lecture. The first part, if you have not checked it yet, go and check now. Uh, the part one talks about the biogeochemical cycle and uh, the, the, the importance and transformations of nitrogen in the environment, in soil environments. Now we're going to talk about uh, what are the, 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 the main pools of nitrogen in the soil and how we can uh, optimize and adequately manage nitrogen fertility to plants. Uh, let me jump to the slides. All right, so in describing the nitrogen pools in soil, we have to keep in mind that the majority of the nitrogen in soil is locked on the organic matter. So this pool here is called the organic nitrogen. You can have up to 90, 95, up to 98% of the soil nitrogen in the organic matter. This is so important because the, in Oman we have very low organic matter because of the climate. It's very uh, arid, harsh climate. And because of that, you have uh, many ways in which nitrogen could be deficient. One of the ways is there is low organic matter concentration in soils. So this, we will deal with this on our practical. Also, our practical will be about organic matter and loss in ignition and its consequence also for a nitrogen deficiency. Yeah? So soil organic nitrogen accounts for the majority of the total nitrogen and the mineralization process, the ammonification or mineralization is the main source in general of nitrogen for microbes and plants. And if you do not have a high pool of or, uh, organic nitrogen, it means that you will not have a uh, sufficiency of nitrogen in these soils. Uh, uh, in, that is the case of Oman. You will always expect to have nitrogen deficiency in Oman. And nitrogen fertilizer is a must for agricultural systems uh, in, in the majority of soils, but in Oman, most of all. In our uh, arid climates, it's, a, it's a, a highly deficient always. Uh, some of these available forms of nitrogen, the, the bioavailable forms, can be also fixed into organic nitrogen by the microbes and plants can be assimilated and immobilized into organic forms. Uh, the, the main available forms of nitrogen to plants are ammonium, nitrates and nitrates. Yeah, Ammonium and nitrates are the main ones. And the main source of this in natural ecosystems are the organic matter cycling uh, and the biological nitrogen fixation also. But in agricultural systems, the main input should be and normally is the input of nitrogen fertilizers. These available forms are very short-lived in soils. Yeah? They, they do not stay long. The ammonium is lost through ammonium volatile, ammonia volatilization. The, the uh, nitrates and nitrates are usually easily leached with irrigation waters or rainfall. And um, because of this, uh, and also denitrification. Yeah? Denitrification is also happening when you have anaerobic conditions. So because these available forms are short-lived, that is why these pools are not long-standing. Yeah? So normally the, the organic matter would be the more long-standing pool on the soil. Uh, but we want to keep these available forms, even though they are not very stable in the soil environment, we want to keep them as high as possible as we can for the plants to be able to update them in time and use it for creating the plant biomass. Yeah? Plants also with uh, uh, the legumes with biological 
nitrogen fixation with the symbiotic association with uh, rhizobium will also have some uh, strong inputs from atmospheric nitrogen through the biological nitrogen fixation. Okay, so the soil nitrogen test is uh, normally done by total nitrogen, whereas in other uh, nutrients we have available forms and extractable forms for the, 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 the nitrogen, the, 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 the main way in which, in which we test bioavailability of nitrogen in soil is by measuring the, the total nitrogen by doing a Keldal digestion. Yeah? We do a digestion of the soil system and then we measure the total nitrogen on the soil. And most of that, 98%, normally is present in organic forms. In organic forms. Um, this is different from other nutrients. The majority of the soil phosphorus are, it's not bioavailable. Whereas in, in, in nitrogen, we expect that the, 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 the a measurement of bioavailability is by measuring the total nitrogen. This is uh, very different from other nutrients. Uh, the nitrogen fertilizer products and the most used ones are urea. Yeah? Urea and the ones that are associated with phosphorus, monoammonium phosphate and diammonium phosphate. Yeah? But we have other sources of nitrogen fertilizer also. From ammonium, like ammonium nitrate, for example. Yeah? Ammonium nitrate could be another source. Um, this is the molecule of urea here. Yeah, we have one carbon um, uh, molecule with two uh, amino groups. When we talk about the application of nitrogen, the, that same type of concept of the, 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 the critical phosphorus or, uh, and the efficiency uh, of the, the, the fertilizer application can be applied for nitrogen also. If all the nitrogen we applied was absorbed by, by the plant, we will have a straight line in here in this graphic. This graphic shows the yields or nitrogen uptake. Uh, in here on the bottom, we have the nitrogen applied. Yeah? The more nitrogen applied, the more you will have the yields. But when you increase the nitrogen application, you decrease the efficiency. It means that not all the nitrogen that you applied apply will be taken up by the plants. So if you apply 60 kilograms of nitrogen uh, per hectare, you would expect to have that the, the, actually the uptake will be only about 70% of this nitrogen. But if you apply 100, the uptake will be you know, only half of this, this amount. It will be only half of this amount. So the more nitrogen you apply in kilograms per hectare, the lower is the efficiency of the nitrogen uh, uptake by these plants. It means more of this nitrogen will be lost, will be lost by denitrification, will be lost by ammonium volatilization uh, um, or nitrate leaching. Uh, what we want is that we want to keep the highest efficient efficiency the, uh, for, for, to do not waste money on uh, and um, do not pollute the environment with this nutrient. So what we want to do is we want to apply the nitrogen always in the lowest doses we can, but fraction. So we apply the, as many more times as possible with the lowest amount that is will be adequate for plants. So it's better to supply the nitrogen fraction in many applications and with that you will increase the efficiency. The majority of the nitrogen that you'll be adding to the soil will be uptaken by the plants and not lost to the environment. So the, the, the ways in which we lose this nitrogen from the soil is uh, from ammonium-based fertilizers we have uh, volatilization and nitrate based fertilizers is by leaching and denitrification. When you apply urea, urea is an organic molecule but will quickly be hydrolyzed into ammonium. Uh, so you would, you would expect usually about 1% loss per day. Uh, every, when you apply the urea every day, you will have 1% less of that urea through the losses, not accounting for the uptake by the plants. 
uh, in warm soils like in Oman, you have high volatilization, yeah, and uh, and with high moisture, you also uh, um, with dry soils you increase volatilization. With high moisture, you will increase denitrification. You create more anaerobic conditions and increase denitrification. But with dry soil, you increase volatilization because the concentration of the ammonia uh, in the soil solution will be higher. And because this concentration is, high, is higher, you will increase the, the, the volatilization losses. Uh, with regards to pH, uh, alkaline soils, you will have more volatilization than in acid soils. So when, when the incorporation of these fertilizers is also important, normally nitrogen is applied uh, on the surface of the soil, but the more superficial is the application, you will have higher volatilization. So what you, what you want to do with the, with the volatilization is actually try to have a slow release nitrogen fertilizers in order to avoid building up high concentrations of ammonium in the soil and avoid to create this potential for uh, the volatilization. Either you use slow release fertilizers or you fraction your application the more you can. And when you do this application, if possible, uh, it, you, uh, it will be a buried fertilizer, uh, not on the surface of the soil. This is not always possible, but if you can do it, the better. Uh, so the nitrate losses, on the other hand, not talking about the ammonium volatilization anymore, now about the denitrification process. So the nitrogen losses, uh, they, they can also vary with pH, temperature and moisture. So what you see here is that when we get to uh, alkaline pHs, you have also more denitrification process. When you have acid pHs, this is inhibiting the denitrification process. Uh, when we talk about the temperature effect, we will see also that higher temperatures also accelerate the denitrification process. Um, and of course, the effect of moisture, because this is an anaerobic uh, process carried out by microbes in the soil, it, it becomes that the higher the moisture you have, you will have uh, higher rates of denitrification happening. So you should avoid to have a very damp soil, a very saturated soil, because that will imply also that you have not only nitrate leaching, but you have more denitrification happening. Denitrification in most soils is secondary to ammonia volatilization or um, uh, nitrate leaching. Now, the, the strategy for applying fertilizer or calculating how much fertilizer you apply is based on the export of the crops. Yeah? Whereas in phosphorus, uh, ideally, you should be calculating your fertilizer based in correcting the bioavailable concentration, the ozone phosphorus concentration in soils. For nitrogen, you cannot do that. Yeah? There is no, uh, uh, no way of reliably storing too much nitrogen in the soil unless you were building up organic matter. The only way of increasing the pool of availability of nitrogen in soils is increasing organic matter content. And depending on the climate, there is some limitations for that. You can never build up too much organic matter on the soil because the climate does not allow, allow for that. So the, the cycling is too high in Oman. And because of that, uh, um, you cannot build too much organic matter in the soils. Normally, organic matter is not long lasting in uh, tropical or arid climates. Uh, and you should always think about the nitrogen that you should apply for the soil based on how much nitrogen the plants are taking from the soil and exporting. So uh, in this situation, you have to calculate how much you are taking up from the soil and exporting. So you need to know the yield per area. You need to know also what is the concentration of nitrogen per kilogram of yield unit or, or, or kilograms or tons or whatever it is that you're uh, using as a yield, yield unit. And then you will divide that by the efficiency. Yeah? So if the efficiency is 70%, you will divide that by 0 0.7, for example. So here is an example of a calculation. So if you have uh, 
15,000 kilograms per hectare of yields, um, and you have 14. And in, now here's 15,000, but on the bottom is 1,500. So I'll just correct this now here. Uh, this 1,500 kilograms per hectare has a moisture content. Let's say if it's a wheat with 14% moisture content, you have to deduce what uh, the amount of moisture in the in this grain. 0.3% uh, nitrogen concentration on the grain. Uh, the efficiency of the fertilizer, if you think it's 10%, is a very low efficiency. Uh, <clears throat> But you can, you can, you know, uh, even here we in the calculations using 70%. So let me change here 70%. Sorry to change this on the go, but uh, take efficiency of 70% in the case of urea, for example. And uh, the percentage of nitrogen on the urea is 46%. So the question mark is how much urea you should apply for your soil. So how much urea you should apply? First of all, you need to see how, what is the dry weight of grains that you are uh, uh, harvesting from this field. Uh, so that means that, uh, um, yeah, this is not, yeah, saying 2% of nitrogen in the grain, not 0.3%. This is here, the calculation is 2%. So let me change this again, 2% of nitrogen on the grain this is a, 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 a mistake that I made on the, on, the, on the PowerPoint slide, sorry. So 2% of nitrogen on the grain. So that means that you have 0 0.02 kilograms of nitrogen per kilogram of grains. Now, if you have that uh, you have 1,315 kilograms of grains of, in dry weight, multiply that by the 0 0.0.2 grains, then you will have how much nitrogen you are taking from the field. But because there is an efficiency of the fertilizer you're going to use of 70%, you need to apply more nitrogen than you're taking out. So you divide that by 0.7 and that will increase the amount of kilograms because of the lower efficiency you have. So if you have a lower efficiency here, if you project you have an efficiency of 0.5 or 0.4, you have to divide here by this efficiency depending on the source of the nitrogen and the amount that you were applying, you will have higher or lower efficiency. Uh, for this efficiency, you can come back and have a look on, the, on this graphic that I showed you before, this one here, and then depending on how much nitrogen you're applying, you can have an ex uh, expect how much efficiency you will have. So let's go back for our calculation. And um, you can have here that then by dividing by this efficiency, you will have the amount of kilograms of nitrogen per hectare that you are uh, having to apply, yeah, to apply for this field. Now, because you are applying this, the amount of nitrogen, but how much is the in kilograms of urea? Now, the urea has 46% of nitrogen, so you should divide this amount by 0.46 and then you will get the kilograms per hectare of urea that you should be applying. So this is the method of recommending fertilizer based on the crop export. Okay, now let's talk about other strategies of, for fertilizer application. Uh, so you should think about the nitrogen that you will, when the crop will need more nitrogen, when is the highest, um, when is the highest need for nitrogen for your crops so when you have more accumulation of plant biomass this is when you need to apply more nitrogen but you as i talked before you should try to fraction this the more you can but if you are reaching a phase where the plants are not growing much, they're fruiting and they don't need too much nitrogen, so you should not apply the nitrogen in this phase, but on the, the parts of the growth cycle where the nitrogen is more needed by the plants and fraction the more you can. Um, so when you have uh, uh, organic farming, you should try to find other ways. You cannot apply chemical fertilizer. So there, you can apply organic fertilizer, but of course, organic fertilizers are not so convenient to apply in large scale. Uh, 
so you need to think about ways of fixing atmospheric nitrogen so what you try to do is use green manures and cover crops with legumes so the legumes will fix atmospheric nitrogen and when you reincorporate that to the soil this nitrogen will be uh, cycled back into ammonium and then will uh, be available for the next crop so in the off season where you're not growing your cash crop you should try to grow uh, 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 cover crops and if you incorporate this if you mix it with the soil you can call this green manure or if you are leaving that as a mulch on the surface it's a cover crop yeah if you're just burning this and leaving it on the surface this is a cover crop if you are turning the soil and mixing this plant with the soil you usually call this green manures so how much nitrogen can come from these green manures and cover crops these are some numbers here that we have uh, sweet clover if you have a biomass productivity of 4.32 uh, tons per hectare this accounts for 134 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare so you can see that some of these legumes can by themselves supply enough nitrogen for the next crop if you have a good management of green manures and cover crops this is enough for you to supply the nitrogen for the next cycle so in organic farming this is a, one of the main strategies one of the best strategies is to have green manures and cover crops but also intercropping with legumes if you have intercropping with legumes that in, can increase a lot the nitrogen efficiency on your system because these legumes will be fixing atmospheric nitrogen and therefore uh, leaving this nitrogen available for the other crops in the system so uh, when when you have a limited amount of nitrogen that you can add to the soil through the cover crops green manures or intercropping in you have to rely in organic farming you have to rely on organic fertilizers applying compost manures biosolids uh, uh, this will account for uh, a good amount of nitrogen the percentage of, of nitrogen in these in these products were usually range in about two percent so if you think about this uh, uh, two percent um, nitrogen then instead of dividing by the 46 percent on the area then you have to make the same calculation but now instead of dividing that by the the, the 0 0.46 you can divide it now by the two percent and that will give you the kilograms of the compost that you should apply the calculation is exactly the same of how much nitrogen you should apply the only difference is the efficiency of the compost it's lower because it's uh, mostly locked in the organic matter and the other difference is the percentage of nitrogen so if you change these two numbers for the efficiency in the calculation that i showed before in the number for the concentration of nitrogen in the compost then you can arrive in uh, um, the dose of compost that you should apply to, to supply this nitrogen for your crop if your crop is already a legume and you uh, th that can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere there is one strategy that you should always take is to inoculate these seeds with the corresponding strains of rhizobium that will assure that this symbiotic relationship is being uh, successful because you might uh, have a percentage of the plants that will develop the symbiosis with the with the rhizobium and other percentage that will not but if you inoculate these seeds with the rhizobium it means you will most likely ha <coughs> have this um, uh, this uh, relationship happening so the rhizobium inoculation is highly recommended if your crop is already a legume so this is all i have to uh, tell you about nitrogen ma management nitrogen fertility management i hope you enjoyed